So we're just a few minutes away now from welcoming uh, Mr Hideo Kojima onto stage at BAFTA to deliver this year's annual games lecture. Now BAFTA's ultimate mission is to celebrate excellence in the art form of the moving image. Uh, Mr Kojima has done a huge amount to help establish gaming as a serious and spectacular art form and tonight he's going to be sharing with us his personal vision for the present and the future of gaming. The BAFTA 2012 Annual Games Lecture is sponsored by Autodesk. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage with associate producer Sean Eisto, Mr Hideo Kojima. Great. Now we're doing this in a slightly more sort of interactive uh, format than we have done previously with annual lectures. So uh, we're going to be having a conversation. I'm going to be asking uh, Mr. Kojima a few of my own questions uh, first, and then we're going to open it up to some audience questions later on. Um, but let's get cracking. It's the 25th anniversary of, of Metal Gear. Uh, and when you began making games, I saw a quote where you said uh, you felt like the world was waiting to see what video games could be and what they could become. And you saw uh, great potential in them. Uh, from the perspective of someone who was a, a big movie lover and wanted to tell stories. Now, comparing Metal Gear as it is today um, to the original MSX version, uh, did you always believe that games would come this far, or are you surprised by what you've been able to achieve in 25 years? Uh, quite honestly, it's surprising to me. You know, 25 years ago, I never really imagined that game hardware would evolve this far so quickly. But if the question is whether or not I'm happy with where it is, the answer is no. For example, if you're going to create a, a piece of art, you first image it in your head. And that original image popped into my head 25 years ago. And for 25 years, I've been trying to recreate that image in the form of a game. And the amount of tools I have available to me has changed. It's increased. I have more uh, colors available to me in my palette. But I still haven't been able to achieve that original image that I had in my head. And until I'm able to achieve that, I'll keep on creating games. I think, you know, at some point, if we can attain a point where games are truly immersive and you can feel things like temperature or smells, then I think at that point it'll come, you know, very close to what I originally had in mind. And at that point, maybe I'll, I'll be satisfied. Now, I've, uh, as a big movie lover, I understand that you also try and, and watch a film every day as well. It's, 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 it's very much a habit of yours. And it's, it's well known you've long harbored a desire to make a movie yourself. So I'm just wondering what's, what's stopping you making a movie and um, uh, what, what sort of story would you like to tell on film and, and your experience as a games designer, what, would you, what do you think you would bring to the big screen? Well, if I go back to my roots, you know, originally I entered the game industry because I wasn't able to enter the film industry, you know, and I, I love film. But once I started creating games, I realized that, you know, games are really fascinating. And, uh, you know, needless to say, I think uh, most people in the audience know that as far as movies based on games up until this point, there haven't been any success stories. And I think one of the reasons for that is that, you know, games are an interactive medium. So really, you know, they create a scenario, you know, setting for the player to interact with, but there's not really a compelling story there for a lot of games. And then, of course, what happens is Hollywood sees that the, the games are popular, they try to pick it up, and they create a story and try to basically force a story onto that game. Um, and in the end, it doesn't work because you end up with something that's neither the game nor a good movie, you know, so fans of the original game won't be satisfied and movie lovers won't really be satisfied with it either, so it doesn't really hit any particular target. Uh, you know, and so that's the problem that I'm trying to remedy with the upcoming Metal Gear Solid movie. And uh, I hope you have confidence uh, in that movie because I feel it will turn out well. Um, there's a lot of, as you've acknowledged, a lot of turkeys um, that have been turned out based on uh, movies based on video games. Uh, are, there, are there any um, films that you think have actually done a good job of conveying uh, uh, the gaming experience on the big screen? <laughs> Honestly, I can't think of any. <laughs> I think, you know, as far as uh, game movies that have done well, I guess Tomb Raider was, was pretty good, as far as sales are concerned. <laughs> but Metal Gear is going to be a masterpiece. Oh, yeah, so we're not going to make a Metal Gear with no action or anything like that. <laughs> when you look at the video games industry as it is today, um, what excites you um, about it and what, what frustrates you, what, what, what disappoints you? 
I guess you can say that well, one thing that I'm not really satisfied with is that most of the games that are released these days tend to be very similar. Um, even if it's not a sequel, uh, you know, the stories and settings that are in the games are very similar to other games and what have come before, so it's not very creative. But I do believe that games have the potential to achieve something that neither movies nor novels can achieve. You know, it's a unique form of storytelling. And I think that you know, game creators should really strive for that. And I believe that you know, should be the mission of all game creators out there, is to create this new, unique form of storytelling and explore it to its fullest. Um, and I think the users as well, players, want that. And uh, I believe, really, that it's my mission to provide that for them. Is the open world Metal Gear kind of, is kind of your ultimate version or vision of Metal Gear? Or are you planning to go even further than that? So, you know, I think, uh, first of all, if you, if you give somebody a mission, you say, okay, your mission is to go and rescue this person, already you create some drama there. However, if you take that a step further and say, give the person the power to decide how they get there, what time they arrive, um, what kind of path they use to sneak into the base, then it creates even more drama and gives them more freedom. So, you know, it's not so much that I'm aiming, I've been aiming to create an open world game so much as just, I just want to give player freedom, you know, the freedom to do things the way that feels natural to them. So up until this point, you know, if you had 100 people and you had made them play a game, you know, they'd all basically arrive, you know, arrive at the same time, take the same route, uh, um, use the same equipment to get the job done. But what I want to do is, you know, from this point on, is give people the freedom. So if you give, if you have 100 people and you give them this mission, they'll all come back with 100 different stories. You know, you, they may arrive at a different time, um, use a different route to get to the base, use different weapons and equipment. So, you know, rather than having one great dramatic story, you have 100, and that's, that's really what I want to accomplish. So it's not necessarily, again, that I'm, you know, aiming for an open world, that's not the end all. What I want to do is give people the freedom uh, to create their own stories and create something that's very personal to them and that's what I that's what I want to accomplish we know a lot of your inspirations for male protagonists of Metal Gear Solid but what are your inspirations for the female characters uh, you know first of all you know when it comes to female characters I myself am male so in a way, I guess you could say that the female characters I create are kind of like my ideal. Um, you know, it's kind of my fantasy. These, these are the type of female characters that I like, and so that's what I make. And uh, ever since I've, I was young, I've always been fascinated with very intelligent uh, career women, or, you know, scientists and people like this. Um, somebody who's very, you know, ambitious, but also has a lot of express is able to express a lot of emotion and so those are the type of female characters that I put into my games uh, but that said you know I think uh, there was one female character Rose and I think she wasn't too popular I don't know do you guys not like her and, uh, ironically she was the one female character that I kind of tried to base on actual people that I knew so <laughs> she was based on uh, past girlfriends or you know female acquaintances that I've known um, and you know she was supposed to be kind of be the character who even you know within this fantasy game where these men were going to war she was like the, the real character who would come and talk to you talk to the player um, and ironically nobody liked her <laughs> so uh, for example you know uh, while the player is out doing a mission she She'll call over the codec and maybe ask the player, hey, you know what day it is today? And, uh, you know, that's something that actually happened to me. Um, you know, of course, I've gotten calls like that before. Um, and so that, that's why it was in there. Has being a father changed the way you design your games? Specifically, do you always feel that you have to try to teach the player something about themselves? Or are you primarily, primarily interested in entertaining them? So, I know. First of all, I'll say that, yes, it has changed me quite a bit. I guess, uh, you know, the way I create games hasn't really changed, but what I, think, what I think about now is not just creating something for myself, but creating something for the next generation and what I can pass on to the next generation. So, you know, I, I find myself thinking about, well, what will happen after I'm gone from this world? Um, you know, what will I leave on to the next generation? And what can I do to, you know, have a positive influence on them? So rather than just creating a game where you kill time or just have fun with it, of course that's important, but I also want to do something that's useful to the next generation, that's useful to the pe people who play it, and, uh, you know, really think about what kind of influence it'll have on them and their lives. And after becoming a father, that's, that's become something that I think about a lot.
So of course, you know, back when I was single and had no kids, you know, I didn't really think that much about the future. Maybe uh, my future planning was limited to about three days. Um, but you know, now that I, I have a, a child and I'm a father, you know, I think about these things. I think about you know what's going to happen down the line, and uh, you know, it's it's really changed my perspective on things and how I you know what I put into my games.